Welcome to Sound Bites, hosted by registered dietitian nutritionist Melissa Joy Dobbins. Let's delve into the science, the psychology, and the strategies behind good food and nutrition. Hello, and welcome to the Sound Bites Podcast. This bonus episode is part of a series of cookbook conversations. These bonus episodes are shorter than my usual episodes, and the discussion is focused solely on the cookbook, recipes, and tips straight from the author. Today's guest is Luis Gonzalez. He is a registered dietitian and an account coordinator at Eat Well Global, which is a highly specialized global nutrition communications and consulting firm. In this role, he uses evidence-based information to empower global change agents in food and nutrition. He is also the creator behind At Nutrition by Photo and enjoys creating delicious food photography for social media. He's worked in a variety of settings, including long-term care facilities and food service management. Lewis received a bachelor's degree and a master's degree from Florida International University. And he co-authored the 30-Minute Dash Diet Cookbook and 21-Day Meal Plan, Fast and Easy Recipes to Lose Weight and Reverse High Blood Pressure, along with his co-author, Andy DeSantis, who is also a registered dietitian and has a master's in public health. Welcome to the show, Lewis. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Melissa. I'm so happy to be here. I'm such a huge fan of your podcast, so I'm super excited to be able to be part of it. Awesome. Thank you. Well, that's one of the reasons I wanted to start doing these cookbook combos, because there's a lot of colleagues out there of ours who are doing some really great stuff. So it's my pleasure to have you on the show and have you tell us all about your awesome cookbook. Before we dive into the questions I have about the book, can you tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself? Sure. I am based in Chicago, I'm originally from Miami, Cuban descent, and I just love all things nutrition and food. So merging uh, recipes, food, and photography has really been a dream career. Mm-hmm. And your at Nutrition by Photo Instagram account is off the charts. It's so amazing. It really caught my eye. I really want people to go check it out. You have a very unique style and brand. You have this dark or black background and the food just pops out at you and it's just such a strong brand. So can you tell us just a little bit about the photography experience and how you came into creating such a unique visual? Absolutely. And thank you so much for those kind words. Really, I was just looking for a more creative outlet in the nutrition world. Um, As I mentioned, I love food and then I love looking at pictures of food. Um, The Food and Nutrition magazine that the Academy puts out was a huge inspiration, just looking through all the articles and all this amazing photography. So I started taking lessons on how to be a better photographer, a lot of YouTube videos, and then finding that very specific style that I have really took some time. And I realized one time when I took a photo that was, it was more that dark background that it made the food really pop. Mm-hmm. And so I decided to pursue that further and, and it's evolved into what it is now. It's wonderful. Everybody's got to go check it out. Now, we're going to dive into the book here. And you did tell me that you were not the food photog for this book, but people can check out your images online. So tell us why you decided to write or co-write this book. That's so funny that you mentioned the photography because I originally reached out to Andy, who has written previous books about doing a partnership where I would photograph his recipes. Mm. That didn't work out, but he offered the opportunity for me to develop the recipes. And so it was just an opportunity that I really could not pass up. Um, I had never done something like this before. So it was a challenge, but definitely a welcome one. You know, now I can say that I'm an experienced recipe developer and cookbook author. And the mission behind the book is really to empower really the general audience who may have hypertension or is heading in that direction, or really anyone who wants to prevent hypertension, but is also really busy throughout the week. The recipes provide them with tasty, varied foods that they can cook throughout the week in big batches and kind of have those nutritious meals ready to save time from cooking. Okay. Yeah, I was going to ask who the book is geared towards. So thank you for sharing that and how great that your passion for food photography kind of brought you down this path. That's really cool. I love how those opportunities kind of present themselves to you. You know, it's really neat how that happens. So let's talk about what's in the book. 
obviously there's recipes and in part of the title that, you know, there's this 21 day meal plan and it sounds like some batch cooking or meal prep type information, but what can people find in the book? So a ton of recipes. We have around 90 recipes for all occasions. So breakfast, snacks, pantry staples, and of course, things you can make for lunch and dinner. So a lot of recipes that are really plant forward, of course, as part of the DASH diet, um, does include some animal proteins, and you'll find that in the book, but really focusing on recipes that include a lot of fruits and vegetables that are lower in sodium and use uh, some convenience items uh, like frozen vegetables to minimize the time in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Great. I guess we should back up a little bit because I often forget that not everybody understands or knows what DASH stands for. Obviously, we've been talking about how this book and the recipes are to help people either prevent hypertension or reverse it. And DASH stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. But did you want to say a little bit more about DASH and why this topic and what the research about DASH shows? Absolutely. So the research is very clear that this type of eating pattern does help to reduce and prevent hypertension. And it's really focused on lowering the amount of sodium that we're putting into our bodies, as well as increasing the amount of potassium that we're putting into our body. So when we think of sodium, a lot of processed foods, when we think of potassium, it's a lot of fruits and veggies mm. that contain this amazing nutrients. And between sodium and potassium, these two are, are really the key minerals that regulate blood pressure. So making sure that we're getting enough of one and maybe a little bit less than the other. Yes, thank you. I love potassium and how it's so helpful for blood pressure because most people just think that it's just salt and sodium. And it's so exciting. You know, we'd like to talk about what you want to add to your diet instead of always focusing on what you want to limit or reduce. So potassium to the rescue here. So back to what people can find in the book. Do you want to kind of share some of the chapter titles? I'm sure you've got like, you know, breakfast and, you know, maybe different snacks and desserts, things like that. But do you want to share that with us? Yeah, absolutely. So we definitely have a chapter on breakfast, and then we break it down by seafood, poultry, pork and beef, and we have a whole chapter on meatless meals. And then, of course, I love dessert, so we couldn't get away without doing a <laughs> snacks and dessert chapter. Mm -hmm. And kitchen staples, so we're talking about, you know, white rice is something that's very important to my eating pattern, but how can we make that even better by adding veggies, or maybe also included in that uh, kitchen staples, having uh, a salt substitute because we still want to add a lot of flavor to the food. Okay. Yeah. That chapter caught my eye. So I'd like to talk about that a little bit. And my question was going to be like, what's the theme here for the kitchen staples, but it's about bringing that flavor to the food without having to rely on sodium, but share some of your favorite kitchen staples. Um, you've got different sauces and seasonings that I'd love for you to kind of describe to our listeners. Yeah, out of this chapter, I really love the pico de gallo because you can add it to so many different things. And in the recipes in the book, we've added it to a couple of uh, recipes as a topping. Mm -hmm. But really, you can add it to fish, you can add it to chicken, you can add it to if you're doing tacos or just uh, the protein by itself. It's such a great addition to add that acidity, which adds a lot of flavor without having to add any extra sodium. And it just goes with so many things. Same thing with the black and seasoning. I love blackened salmon. Mm -hmm. And I definitely, I mean, I make those salmon tacos maybe like <laughs> once every couple of weeks because I love them so much. Mm. So all these little different things that you can add to either the recipes in this book, or even if you have other favorite recipes to add more flavor without adding that additional salt. Right. Because I think when people think about a diet to prevent or treat hypertension, they're thinking about salt and then they're thinking it's going to be bland. It's not going to be flavorful. And it's just really eye-opening when, when you look at all of the different types of flavors and herbs and seasonings. And like you've got this orange vinaigrette, you're talking about peanut sauce, cinnamon almond butter. You know, there really are so many flavors beyond salt. And I love salt and salty things, but this is just really nice variety. And it really livens up the meals. Absolutely. I mean, just to name a few, there's oregano, cumin, black pepper, bay leaves, all these different things that add a lot of flavor to the foods. And a lot of them are very familiar to me from my Cuban background. We like to cook with a lot of spices, not mm -hmm. spicy food, but a lot of flavorful spices. Um, so I found little ways here and there to integrate 
uh, a couple of favorite ingredients from my my own food culture and food history. Oh, wonderful. I was going to ask if there was a Cuban influence in this at all. So very good. Can you share a specific tip or idea or even describe a recipe for us that people will find in the book? Well, my favorite tip is to really cook large portions that say whenever you have time during the week, say a Sunday or a Monday, you cook a bigger portion of something so that part of your meal is ready to go and you just have to focus on maybe the protein or maybe the veggies that you'll add on the side. So finding little ways to reduce the time you spend in the kitchen. Mm. I mean, I love cooking and I love eating, but I don't love spending hours in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So finding little ways to reduce that time you spend in the kitchen and including not necessarily fresh produce. You can also integrate frozen vegetables. You can integrate canned fruits and vegetables if you pick the right ones and you treat them properly. You know, there's uh, beans, green beans, all kinds of veggies that can be found, uh, no added salt or sodium free. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are great options. And even ones that don't have those labels, you can just rinse under cold water to make sure you're removing any excess sodium and they can be a budget friendly Mm. and convenient way to just have nutritious food items. I'm so glad you mentioned that because sometimes when we think about healthy cooking and healthy cookbooks, and especially with regard to the sodium, because we know that there is more sodium in canned items and as you say, processed items, partly for a food safety factor, we think, oh, it's got to all be fresh and that could be more expensive. But these convenience items, the low sodium canned, or to your point, you can really reduce the sodium like in canned beans, I believe it's something like by a third, or maybe almost half, you can reduce Mm -hmm. the sodium by rinsing. So I'm really glad you mentioned that. What is your favorite recipe from the book? You know, I gotta be honest, my favorite recipe, so let me back up a second. A lot of the recipes that I included are things that I cook on the regular. I mentioned the salmon tacos, but really even the recipe that's on the cover, these um, shrimp and Brussels sprouts and pasta, I make that maybe a couple of times every month or so. Mm -hmm. So all that to say is my favorite recipe is actually one that I developed for the book. So Mm. the cinnamon mug cake, oh my gosh, Mm -hmm. it is so easy to do and it's so delicious it literally takes less than five minutes to put all the ingredients together and it comes out so good that's been like my favorite dessert (laughs) Mm. ever since um including it in the book cinnamon mud cake a cinnamon mug cake mug cake okay i thought i was thinking like chocolate or something (laughs) (laughs) it's so easy to do in the microwave i see in a mug i got it very good and you know we're going to talk about where people can find the book and find you online But besides your at Nutrition by Photo, do you have a website, a blog? Are there recipes that you've developed or that maybe weren't in the book that you have online somewhere? So actually, developing this cookbook has been the only time where I've really developed recipes. I do have a website, which is LG Food Photography, and that's really uh, more focused on having my photography portfolio. Okay, very good. So tell us where we can find the book and also follow you online. We've got the at Nutrition by Photo and you've got your website that you listed, but any other social media sites that you would want to share with us and where can we get the book? Yeah, so the book is on Amazon and you can search for the title or you can actually go to the link on my Instagram page. I have linked on there. You can, it goes directly to the Amazon page. And I actually also post on the Lahidan social medias, which is the Latinos and Hispanics in Nutrition and Dietetics member interest group of the academy. I'm the communications chair this year, so I post a lot in there as well on their behalf. That's wonderful. I'm actually finishing up my two-year communications director position with the diabetes dietetic practice group. So didn't know we were kind of wearing that same hat in two different groups. That's awesome. Yeah, it's been a lot of work, but it's been a lot of fun. We just did our first virtual symposium, which uh, was a huge success. So I'm really excited about that. It is a little bit of time-consuming work, but I've loved connecting with our members in the Lahidon community. It has been really the best part of volunteering for that role, just being able to engage with our members and being really direct contact um, with them. I agree. It all comes down to the relationships and the connections. Is there anything else you want to tell us about the book? Um, We've talked about some of the recipes and tips and the batch cooking aspect, which I think is really helpful for people to think about. As you said, even if you love cooking, 
Nobody wants to spend a lot of time in the kitchen, or I shouldn't say nobody, but most people, you know, they want to make more out of that time. So what else would you like to tell us about the book as we're wrapping up? I mean, I can share that the book is really, uh, it's meant to provide convenience for the consumer. And even if you're, you know, an experienced culinary person, or you already have a host of recipes that you like to follow, a lot of times when I find recipes online for myself, I like to check them out and then maybe make some changes that appeal more to my particular taste. So feel free to read through the recipes. And if there's any little changes you want to make, I encourage that because at the end of the day, we're really trying to feed ourselves. So anything or any little way that you can make the recipe your own, I'd say go for it. I love that. I'm just starting to kind of get there in my culinary journey where, you know, like maybe a little bit more of this ingredient or less of that one or different herbs, you know, swapping those out. So um, it's been fun to kind of expand my horizons a little bit as well. And it's always a journey. (laughs) Yes, it is. Well, thank you so much, Louis. It's been so great talking with you and learning all about your new book, which by the way, I didn't mention, it just came out uh, late December. So it's still pretty new. So I'm really excited to share this out with everybody and encourage them to check it out and follow you on Instagram. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. All right. Thank you. And for everybody listening, as always, enjoy your food with health in mind. Till next time. For more information, visit soundbitesrd.com. Music by Dave Burke, produced by JAG in Detroit Podcasts.